pointing out what hundreds of Muslims have been doing in their backyards. One of the fantastic things about living in a free country is that we can move when we want, where we want. We can take any job that we're qualified for and basically govern our own lives. Hopefully, if you had any sort of normal American childhood, you grew up with the concept of how to deal with those amazing freedoms. If you're coming here from another country, once you go through the vetting process that immigrants must all go through, you're also afforded those same privileges. We don't have random checkpoints when crossing into new states, and we don't require you to notify anyone when you move, except maybe the Postal Service if you want your mail forwarded. However, if you're a refugee or an illegal immigrant and you don't have a plan for how to live when you get here, you might not adapt all that well. One would think that a government-sponsored refugee would have some sort of place where the government could get a hold of them again, but that's not the case. Just like you and I, these refugees have the freedoms to move around as they wish, and when they move, they sometimes take their nasty habits with them. Especially those from uncivilized countries with very different standards than ourselves. That was the case in Fresno, California where the city is having to deal with Muslims who have some nasty habits. Via Creeping Charia Fresno, California the police responded to a call about a loud party on East San Ramon Avenue, but it wasn't just any party, a sheep was reportedly being slaughtered in a backyard. Muslim refugees were unaware that slaughtering sheep is not allowed in the city, the police wrote afterward in their report, which also stated that those involved were advised to clean up the blood and mess and warned that in the future they could be cited. The animal, actually a goat, was killed by a Syrian refugee who later skinned roasted and shared it with his Syrian neighbors in the apartment complex where they all live. Refugees are typically placed in towns and cities such as Buffalo, New York, Boise, Idaho, and Fayetteville, Arkansas, where resettlement agencies ease their transition to life in a new country. But they are free to move about the country like anybody else, and they sometimes land in places like Fresno that are not exactly prepared for their arrival. Since late 2016, more than 200 Syrian refugees originally settled elsewhere in the United States have made a fresh start in Fresno, the largest city in California's agricultural belt. They have been drawn there mainly by cheap housing. But behind the low rent is a city struggling with high poverty and unemployment, making it more difficult for the refugees to secure jobs. And Fresno has no federally funded agency to help them find work learn basics like bus routes and understand the United States culture and rules, like with the practice of animal slaughter. Syrian children turned up unexpectedly at Awani Middle School, needing vaccinations, drama counseling, English language instruction and academic support as a result of interrupted schooling. It was a shock at first, said Jose Guzman, the principal. We never had to teach students who speak Arabic. But Muslim refugees represent a polarizing issue. Although all refugees undergo extensive screening before being approved for resettlement, some Fresnans have echoed President Trump's concerns that the vetting isn't good enough. As the Syrian flow intensified, Turlock, a town about 80 miles north of Fresno that has been receiving Christian minorities from Iraq and Iran for more than a decade, was identified as a site with decent housing, jobs, and a welcoming mayor, said Karen Ferguson, executive director of the International Rescue Committee of Northern California. About 250 Syrians, overwhelmingly Muslim, were sent there. But the agency could not immediately house all of them, stranding some families in hotels for several weeks or longer. Last fall, a few members of Fresno's 15,000-strong Muslim community, Pakistanis, Yemenis, Iranians, and Palestinians, among others, offered to help. Soon, they were welcoming four Syrian families to apartments that they had found for them. Word traveled fast to Turlock and elsewhere that rent in Fresno was a relative bargain, about $450 a month for a two-bedroom unit in some places, and that there were people ready to supply furniture, food, clothing and more. In a blue-collar neighborhood once stubbed Sin City, more than a dozen Syrian families with up to nine members apiece are cramped into two-bedroom units in two apartment blocks on East San Ramon Avenue, where the goat roast occurred in February. 
there have been no reports of anti-Muslim violence or vandalism. And Syrians keep arriving. That disturbing flow of refugees and undocumented illegals who are given all the rights that every legal citizen has is a recipe for disaster. This uninhibited flow has no choice but to corrode the culture that we currently enjoy because of the unnatural non-integration that they insist on sticking to. A person who seeks refugee status should be in a position where they're ready to adopt at least the basic tenets of a new culture. Let's face it, if their culture was so great, they could have stayed there. Even if the culture that they came from had no problems whatsoever, and it just fell on hard times. Obeying our laws and learning our ways is the price you pay for our protection. If that seems harsh to you, you should see what these folks are fleeing, that is harsh. And for the record, Muslims have to slaughter the animals to keep in fighting shape since they're required to slaughter infidels, that's you and I, in just the same way. Don't want to let that skill get rusty while they wait for their day to take over the US, US.